my name is Tanya from Busco Social and I'm happy to have uh, Richard Stommer, writer from Norway, here with me for a short interview. Thank you. So, Richard, can you tell us a bit more how did you get into writing? So, I've been writing for, um, for many, many years, um, but it's uh, just recently, last three years, I decided to publish it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is my first published book, um, but uh, I have been uh, writing short stories and novels for many, many years. They're all in the shelf. <laughs> Probably will stay there. <laughs> oh, no. Who knows? Waiting for better days. <laughs> Waiting for better days. If nobody listens, is your, uh, is your debut novel. So where did you get the inspiration? Well, I was thinking about the inspiration for writing. Um, uh, I am at that age where um, Alistair McLean and that kind of authors were really inspiring, Jack Higgins. Uh, so that was what I was reading when I was 13, 14, 15. And uh, so I like that kind of um, atmosphere to the book. Um, if Nobody Listens is quite contemporary, so it's about uh, themes that are um, much more, um, yeah, valid today but mm -hmm. still uh i must say there are lots of nods and uh, uh, tips of the hat to alice mclean and that kind of writers i think they influence a lot on how i write stuff as well mm -hmm. do you have any scandinavian writer that uh, influenced your um, works i not really um i'm a big fan of a Norwegian writer called Roy Jacobsen, mm -hmm. but he is actually not a thriller writer. He uh, is a different uh, kind of more story literate thing. Uh, he was uh, shortlisted to the Man Booker Prize. Oh, uh, okay. So that's, uh, yeah, so I, I really like his style. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I can't really say that I have some... Uh, something uh, so, someone special um, like that anymore mm -hmm. it's it's still the old guys and when I read all the um, old stuff from Alice McLean it's quite easy to see that there are some flaws and spots but you didn't really see that when you were 12 13 uh, you didn't care exactly <laughs> exactly great stories Alvid, the programming programmer is the main character of your mm. novel so could you tell me where did you get the inspiration for his character and yeah. his story? Um, actually, originally, Tom Arvid was supposed to be the villain in the story. Oh. And that's why it's called Arvid, because Arvid is a kind of a Norwegian Scandinavian afternoon that works, a surname that works, but it's also evil, if you oh. pronounce it a bit oh, quickly. <laughs> so, uh, that, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. He ended up as the um, protagonist. and. Uh, I wanted someone who could fit into um, the tech world that we are having today. Uh, because obviously a lot of the, the, the things in the story uh, is within um, the tech and the corporate world and, um, and uh, hacking and stuff like that. And so I, I needed him to be competent and believable in that area mm -hmm. as well as being trained so he actually can defend himself mm -hmm. but he um he has no resemblance to me or anyone <laughs> i know or <laughs> officially <but> officially <laughs> yeah so uh he is uh perhaps the one i wanted to be not really either but still he is, he is uh, I, I think he became a quite interesting character yeah uh, so why did you set your novel in Ukraine, for the most part? Yeah, um, the reason is that the, the theme of the book and the, the subjects it's dealing with um, needs a certain culture or a certain atmosphere to be believable. And I think that this helps making the stuff believable. Uh, Ukraine is a beautiful city, uh, a beautiful uh, country, um, and so, but, but it's still the fact that we sort of can believe that stuff like this is, might be happening there. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also, uh, there's also parts in the States, and we also sort of can believe in such a big country that these things might actually happen. It's much, much harder to uh, justify that in Ireland or in Norway, because 
smaller conditions, if mm -hmm. something like that happened, we surely wouldn't know about it. Right. So, that, so, so, uh, so that is uh, that is a reason for. Uh, I felt the story would be much more believable if they were in those places. In the book you talk about dangers of not develop, developing new antibiotics mm. and its potential disastrous consequences. Yeah. So do you think it resonates with current situation in the world? Yes. Could that happen to us? Yes. Um, if, if you look at that, um, there is the World Health Organization uh, holds this as one of the biggest threats. Um, and I think every hospital and every doctor within that field worldwide are all saying the same. Uh, this might be very, very disastrous. Um, it takes a decade to develop new antibiotics. It's not profitable. There are few antibiotics in the pipeline and you never know what kind of bacterium uh, that will be resistant the next time. There are already discovered uh, resistant bacteriums, but um, so it will come, mm -hmm. for sure, and there will be um, diseases around it, for sure. The question is um, how big uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the catastrophe will be. And it's also quite, uh, and that's one of the reasons for writing this book, it was uh, this dilemma of, of being in a, a commercial uh, capitalistic world where we mm -hmm. sort of get all the welfare we, we have due to capitalism. And this is what happens when capitalism fails because there is no profit. There is no. It's not profitable to to make antibiotics per definition. So who, who's going to pay? That's a, that's the big question. That's true. But then again, you can't put the price on human life. Nope. So it's a it's tricky. It that is way. tricky. Are you writing rituals? I uh, try to. Uh, Carve in a couple of hours, um, three to four days a week. Okay. So I try to make up a thousand, fifteen hundred words, and normally I, I get there. Yeah. So um, crazy early hours in the morning, or yes, yes, <laughs> like very crazy <laughs> early mornings, and also sometimes some very late evenings. Mm -hmm. So uh, my my boys has left home, so it's um, easy now. But uh, when I absolutely see people with uh, small children and family obviously it's, this is very very hard mm. but you need you, and you need some time to sort of get into your own story again mm. you've been in reality for so long so you need half an hour mm. to get in the atmosphere and so it's not done within a, you can't really do 15 20 minutes Tell us what are you working now? Are you writing another? Yes, novel? yes. So my next novel is um, about uh, seventy-five percent finished, um, and it will be as uh, a part two of the current story. So uh, I'm very excited about that. I think it will be quite fun. Are we following Vasily or Tom? Or... We are actually following both of them, uh, but we are also um, getting some of the girls on board, both okay. the small <laughs> and the big. So uh, yes, I think it's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, this is going to be quite exciting. I look forward to it. So could you just tell us where we can get uh, if nobody listens? That will be on Amazon. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for having me. And we me. look forward to the new title. Thank you.